G'day. Um, my question is, um, last week, I think it was, the Australia Club uh, voted against having women involved. I think 62% agreed not to. Um, do you think that's a generational issue or do you believe it to be uh, a helpful and assisting thing to a society to have men and women only clubs? Susan Alberti, let's go to you first. Oh, on thank that. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I have a view on the um, men's clubs and women's clubs. Um, I have a member of the family who is a member of the Australian Club, and I spend more time at that club on my own having dinners and functions than he has ever dreamt of. So if women want to have their women only clubs and the men want to have theirs, I don't have a problem with it. So it doesn't bother me one little bit because I spend a lot of time at one of those clubs. Tom Elliott, I understand you are a member of a gentleman's only club, is that right? I am. I had to think about it on the way over here. I'm a member of eight clubs. One is men only, the other is all and any genders. Do you mind sharing which club is uh, the men's? It's the, it's the Melbourne Club. The Melbourne Club, okay. And why are you a member of that? Why is oh, it important? A friend's father asked me to join ages ago and I just said yes. I, didn't even, I never even go there because I never have any time. But the thing is, and, and we need to think about these things, they are an anachronism, but that's not a bad thing. Like the Melbourne clubs, broadly, there's about four of them, plus the ones in Sydney, actually represent the old London clubs. But that's what they were sort of built mm -hmm. after. Weirdly, the London clubs aren't like that anymore. You know, they're, they're, they're just more like restaurants and things that you can go to these Sure, days. The, the issue here is more... Whether women should be allowed to join. What do you well, think? Well, they're social clubs. Like, people think that they're bastions of power and influence <laughs> and all this sort of thing. I can tell you, nothing could be further from the truth. They're just a social club. I mean, you might as well say, you know, I went out to Druin a few months ago and spoke to a men's shed out there, you know, older unemployed men in a country part of Victoria. Now, that's a men's club too. Mm. And no one's sticking up their hand and saying, oh, well, we should get rid of that. So they're social clubs. Look, I believe in, you know, gender equality in business and in sport and all sorts of things. But social clubs are just that. They're social mm. clubs. They Absolutely. don't have the, the power and the influence that people think they do. Claire O'Neill, is well, it? Men's yeah, shed no, the I, same I, thing? I don't buy that. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> I, I found this debate just totally amazing that we're still talking about this in 2021. And I actually have a lot of trouble understanding the mindset, Tom, and I'm very interested to, to hear your reaction why would men not want to be in the same space as women? And I actually find this almost a little bit funny that there's this club and there's all these kind of what feels to me must be like sort of older men who, you know, have a bunch of privilege that they didn't earn, probably don't deserve, and here they are in this final space in society where they still get to feel like kings of the world. And I just think it's time to wake up, guys. Like, yes, this but, is, but this Claire, is it may be argued, why do women... Uh, feel the same way about their clubs. Yeah. Why are, we, are men not engaged with the women in their clubs as well? well Maybe argued on the same yeah, way. Yeah, and, and I totally what understand that. And men. that's why I don't think, you know, we, we should kind of outlaw these institutions or anything like that. But I do think it's a little bit funny that these guys only feel comfortable in a space <laughs> where they're around other men. And the difference between the, the men's clubs and the women's clubs is, of course, that we exist in a society where men exercise massively more social and economic power than women. And, the, you know, the, the idea that we can compare this to a club of unemployed men mm -hmm. is, frankly, I find that a little bit so offensive. What, 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 no, no, sorry to say it. You but asked me about men's clubs. I'm just yeah. saying there are many different sorts of men's clubs. And, and the other thing to remember is it's not like these men live at their club and do nothing else. You know, for most of them, they might go to lunch, I don't know, once a month or mm. something like that. They mm. have families, wives, daughters, as I do. And it's, it's, it's not something they go and do all the time. It's just one facet but of their what's existence. What's the problem from, yeah. from your point of view of, of letting women into the club that you're a member? Oh, I actually don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's just never been put to a vote. I don't really care in, in the so, sense that... Uh, well, just on that, would you vote in favour of letting women into your club? Yeah, I probably would. Okay. I mean, it hasn't yeah. come up because it's just... It's, I, I spend so little time there, it's just not even an issue. Hannah? But Well, I think... I mean, whilst I agree with Claire, I do think that society is profoundly unequal and is built on a whole host of spaces being made available to men to be comfortable and to move around freely. And women have been tussling to endeavour to reform the system so that we can bridge the gender gap. So I find it astounding that in 2021, we have a group of the most privileged, and I think with respect, Tom, I don't think that these aren't powerful lobby groups that sit behind the scenes in private clubs who impact how we shape society. I dare to say the most powerful um, club in Australia who has voted unanimously or unequivocally to deny women access to power and privilege is telling. And I guess for me, 
curiously, I'd be curious to know who the membership is of that club, which political parties, which institutions and corporations they belong to, and that what their public position is on women mm. and on sexism. Are they prepared to publicly state that they endorse the sexist and the, the um, denial of opportunity and inclusion for women? I would argue that their public standing, would there's a dissonance between what they say publicly and what they do privately. And well, maybe, but... Two of the prominent uh, members of the Australian Club in Sydney are former Prime Ministers. Absolutely. Uh, Malcolm well, Turnbull and Absolutely. John Howard. Well, Absolutely. I mean, they're, but they're on the record as to what they believe about all sorts sure. of things. And you can judge them on that. Sure. But, but these are the places and spaces where decisions are made. We shape societies in these spaces. Well, but see, and on the that, I would disagree. Well, they're not yeah. the place where but decisions are made. But why are we concentrating on the men's clubs? Why not talk about the women's clubs as well? Sure. Let but me the... bring in Darren yeah. Chester here, because uh, you're sitting silent uh, on this one so far. <laughs> Minister, uh, what do you think about these gentlemen's only and women's only I was, I was I was I was enjoying the argument David I'm, I'm probably not the best one to judge I've I've set myself the task this year in Gippsland to visit uh, every pub in my electorate so not too many clubs in Gippsland which have this exclusivity to them <laughs> I do find it um, I do find it a little bit unusual and quite extraordinary I guess in the modern era that uh, we would have clubs that would exclude people uh, on the basis of gender and, you know, miss out on 50% of the population. When you think, you know, look at the, the amazing women on your panel tonight, look at their bios. I mean, they've achieved great things in their lives already. Why wouldn't you want them as members of your club? But I do take Susan's point as well, that there's women's only clubs. I, I, I make the point, though, Susan, one of the things we found here in regional areas is that once we merged our football and netball clubs together, we actually got, a, I think, a better social atmosphere around our club with yes. the, uh, the netballs involved in the club, the, the, mm. the mixing of the footballs and netballs, moderated behaviour mm. a little bit, I reckon. And I think our footy and netball clubs have performed better as a, uh, a cohesive part of community since we, we merged the two together. So, look, I'm not going to die in the ditch on this year. It's just not <laughs> something that particularly excites the people of Gippsland. But uh, I've got to say it's, um, it's unusual in the modern era that you'd cut out your chance to get half the population to join your club.